Is front projection dead? I think front projection is on its way out and I don't care how many newfangled light rejecting screens there are or how many sh ultra short throw projectors manufacturers want to make. They are on borrowed time and let me tell you why. Uh, front projection used to be the only way that you could have a truly big screen or cinematic experience in your home. And so, as a result, it was popular, it worked, and it was the best way, or at the time, the only way to recreate the cinema or commercial cinema experience in your home. But now, here we are in 2018, about to be 2019, and that just simply is no longer the case. Front projection's biggest claim to fame is you can go bigger, larger, cheaper. The problem with front projection is, is you can go bigger, larger, and cheaper, but you can't necessarily go brighter, better, more features, uh, easier, and just all around as good. That's right, I said it. Yes, front projection can be bigger than flat panel TVs, but they can't be brighter at least not without a really, 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 really expensive projector. And even then I argue they can't be brighter. Um, they're not easier. Um, and honestly, in order to match the performance of a big screen or a flat, big flat screen TV, you actually end up spending more. So there are a lot of claims out there that front projection is the least expensive way to have a truly immersive experience. Horseshit. Total horseshit. Because what most of these projection companies are claiming is you can buy our projector, uh, HD or 4K, for two to five to seven to even twenty thousand dollars. All right, whatever it is, let's just say it's two grand. Okay, it's two grand. Um, but you want it to be bright. You want to be able to enjoy HDR. You want to be able to watch with some lights on, maybe, or you know, just have it in a media room. Oh, well that's gonna require a specialty screen. On the low end, that type of a screen is gonna run you another thousand dollars for a hundred inch. So now we are up to three, four grand for just the projector and a screen. I'm not gonna get any sound, so I need to factor that in. Um, I need cables a really long cable because I have to stretch from wherever the screen is all the way to wherever the projector is. So that's that's cost. Um, I have to set it up, I have to put a projector on my ceiling, run power to it, um, align it, hope no one bumps it. Oh my gosh, if I have a second floor and the kids are jumping up and down on the second floor, I hope it doesn't jiggle, and so on and so forth. And so that's just some of the reasons why I think front projection is kind of on life support because as you no doubt have noticed um, since you know uh, we just got through Black Friday and Cyber Monday there are some truly big flat panel uh, TVs out there for not a lot of money we're talking 75 80 82 inch displays they're not difficult to set up you hang them on the wall you plug them in Sure, we can talk about calibration, and calibration is important, but at the end of the day, if you want a big screen experience, you can take said screen out of the box, hang it on your wall, plug it in, hit power. They're either going to walk you through the initial setup, a la Mac, or you're already going to know how to do it. You can have an 80 inch flat screen display with Ultra HD, 4K resolution, streaming built in, speakers the whole lot in a form factor that is absolutely gorgeous with a picture quality that will literally kick the snot out of any projector on the market today for less than even a budget front projection setup. Now it's true front projectors and that two-piece projection system can go bigger than what some of the flat panel displays are but a lot of people don't really have the space and I argue the ones that do end up buying too large of a screen thinking they've got to fill their wall and then they end up with like this 120 inch screen they sit way too close to it the projectors not blight, bright enough to illuminate it and they have a terrible experience all around 
But you want to know what's really difficult to tell the difference between? Uh, 85 inches and 92 inches, or even 85 inches and 100 inches, because once you're talking about a flat panel display that size in a living room, media room, or hell, dedicated theater, it's really hard, really hard to justify the complexity and honestly, the frustration that comes with a two-piece front projection setup. And I'm saying this because I used to be a front projection enthusiast. I had dedicated rooms, all of which had 100 to 120 inch front projection setups. And honestly, I have not had a two-piece projection set up in probably two years and honestly I don't miss it at all. This is why I think in 2019 and beyond front projection setups are just gonna go the way of the dinosaur. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Yes, I'm gonna turn those back on. But let me know in the comments below do you think front projection is dead or dying? I am well dying to know.